these beetles are slowly eating up all the leaves off my tomato. They're even mating. Why do I let them be there? Shouldn't I spray? Everybody is Emily, and I welcome myself back. Um, before I get into the main topic of this video, I want to let y'all know where I've been. I got, I came down with, I haven't figured out if it was a cold or a mild flu yet, but you know, one of those little summer viruses, and I just felt icky for a little over a week. I felt, my symptoms were mild, but I still felt lethargic and indifferent, didn't want to do anything. You know, so, no, I wasn't going to, some of you may have thought, oh, she's gone away for another month or two again. No, <laughs> no, I just, just, just didn't want to do anything. And it was, the weather was, I, I didn't really have anything to report. There were, you know, not much going on. So I just decided to take a little time off. So that's where I've been. So, yeah, back to those black beetles. Why am I letting them eat down my tomatoes? Speaking of tomatoes, look at all this open space. Let me get off track for just a minute. Yeah, I seriously and severely pruned my tomatoes about a week ago. I was just tired of the mess, and a lot of these branches, lower branches, were getting were diseased. And yeah, I did have some baby tomatoes and flowers on some of them. Oh well. But yeah, speaking of disease. I can't remember if this happened to my tomatoes the first year we were here, but it did the, um, the one volunteer tomato I had last year, this happened. I don't know if it's like fusarium wilt or a blight, I don't know what it is, but I mean if you live in North Texas where we used to live, usually, I mean you ask any vegetable gardener in North Texas, they will tell you you're lucky if you have any tomatoes left in August. They always, everybody their tomatoes get diseased, and especially the organic ones who don't want to spray anything. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, so this isn't breaking my heart or anything, but this is one reason I decided now I don't, I don't like, I don't like this. I don't like when grasshoppers get on and suck my tomatoes. That's not nice. But <laughs> what about the black beetles? Well, see, there's two different things going on here. Three, really. First, you know, the fact that I just don't like to kill anything, and the kale and clay that I ordered from Amazon was supposed to be here by the 27th. It's the 29th right now when I'm doing this video, and I don't know where it is. I keep forgetting to track it. I haven't felt why I haven't felt, I haven't cared <laughs> lately. I need to go ahead and do that. But um, the kale and clay might keep them off, but I don't have it. But you know, and I just didn't want to keep squishing and coming out. I was wasting, I felt like I was wasting my time. Because you know what, you would remove a couple dozen and a couple dozen would replace them in a few hours. Yeah. So, well, why not just spray? Well, okay, back to the disease. They're dying anyway. It's slow, but it's sure. I know it from experience. The other thing is, I realized that at least, I can't remember which ones, but at least two of these tomato varieties, yellow pear, some variety of cherry, and Principe Borghese, um, are determinate species, varieties, not species, <laughs> determinate varieties, which means, in case you don't know, they only, they, they only grow so high and for so long, and they only produce for so long, and when they're done, they're done. And I have noticed the tomato growing, new tomato growing production slow down a little bit, not as much in years past because of the, of the high fertilizer, high amount of fertilizer in the potting mix I use. Yeah, look at all those rotting tomatoes that have dropped down and ugh, it kind of stinks over here. But anyway, so I finally decided, you know what, I'm just going to let these guys have their way because they'll chow down. If they finished off all the, the three big black nightshades in this garden, and so now they're all over here happily munching on the tomato and when they're done with all the tomatoes they'll go away. And I've decided I'm okay with it because, like I said, they're dying and their production is slowing down. That's okay. 
And a minor reason also is, wow, I've had way more tomatoes this year than I did last year because, you know, I just had one volunteer plant that didn't do that well. So, I mean, we've, we've been eating every day lots of little tomatoes for lunch, plus I've been able to put several big bags up in the freezer. I'm happy with this year's production so far. It'll be better next year because of some things I'm going to change, and that, I'm going to get into that in a moment. But um, I want to generalize out now from why I'm not spraying the tomatoes or otherwise trying to get rid of the, rid of the beetles to my decision about spraying in general for my vegetable, vegetable crops. I'm not talking about here, I'm not talking about my berries or the grapes, which, gra did you know grapes are technically berries? Uh, anything, but, but I'm talking about tomato, pepper, cucumber, Red malabar spinach, obviously the red malabar spinach never needs spraying anyway. It's happy. But I've decided I'm not going to spray. Not for the disease on the tomato, not um, for the cucumber either. And I did mention this in uh, on a recent video. But I wanted to re-emphasize the fact and go a little bit deeper. First of all, yeah, I've got to understand, I'm a pretty lazy gardener. Now this I don't like. They're not supposed to be on my computer. My, my computer. My cucumber go away. The tomatoes are over there. Okay. There's a couple more too. I thought of chucking today. But um Yes, what about the powdery mildew and all that fun stuff? So I don't I don't like extra work. I do not like the extra work of spraying. And um number one. I don't like especially coming out in the humidity, heat and humidity. I don't want to have to buy, I don't want to have to keep buying fungicides and insecticides and all those sides. So what am I going to do? Just let everything die when it wants to die? Oh no! We have a plan. And I more than hinted at that plan in that previous video, but just to remind y'all, um, this, this cucumber was planted last. There is, I do have a cucumber. I have a mature cucumber down there that needs to be picked. Well, not mature yet, but it's pretty big. I mean, it's big enough to be picked. Oh, there's another. I totally missed that one. That one needs to be picked. Oh, there's more going. Yay! Okay. So, yeah, it's really easy to miss them because when they're under all these leaves. But to avoid having to spray, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant three times during the summer. I'm going to plant May 1st, approximately, you know, my, my, the very first, earliest plants, May 1st, and then June 1st, and then July 1st, and this is something I didn't tell you about because I hadn't planned to do it. I am also, should I tell you or should I keep it a secret? Oh, I'll tell you. I'm planning to grow indoors during the summer. Now, I won't necessarily avoid the disease that way because I'm not going to keep the windows closed all the time, but I am planning on buying an air purifier for the tough shed, and um, we're going to have the red and blue LED lights, and I am going to uh, not be, uh, there will not be any bugs. <laughs> so, I am not only going to have plants outside, I'm going to have a few plants inside so if I, you know when I do have the annual black beetle invasion that want to eat up all my tomatoes I said that's fine I've got three growing in the shed and they're producing like crazy and you can't get in there na 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 boo boo <laughs> so with the Oklahoma insect or symphony orchestra playing in the background I want to wrap up this video and say thank you for watching uh, that is basically that that is my decision I wanted to share with y'all my decision that I'm just not going to bother I'm going to continue the way I've been continuing I'm just going to keep on doing what I've been doing. I am going to do better. I'm going to try to do better at companion planting next year. Planting more herbs around. Also have more pollinating herbs and flowers in addition to attract the honeybees and bumblebees so I have more, say for example, cucumbers. <laughs> but that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be spacing out my planting so that if I end up with one crop getting de devastated by disease or pests, there will be another one coming up shortly. I'll have pretty much continual production throughout the summer, plus the things I'm going to grow indoors, and that'll be a big project coming up. I hope, I can't guarantee it, but, you know, I hope to start getting it set up this fall and winter and get it started this spring. 
So there you go. That's what's been going through my head during my bit of time off. And maybe I needed the time off just to try to figure some things out. So, yep. Again, thank you for watching. I'll see you for the next video. In the meantime, take care and be well.